Hello folks, I'm Curbsider Correspondent Chris Chu. In this episode, Curbsiders Matt Watto, Paul Williams, and Stuart Kent Brigham talk to Dr. Scott Weingard, MD, FCCM, FUCEM, DIP HTFU of the MCRIT podcast, and Clinical Associate Professor and Chief, Division of Emergency Critical Care at Stony Brook Hospital in New York. If you like what you hear today, you can find the full episode on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever else you find your podcasts. Full show notes at thecurbsiders.com. Now on with the show. There's a natural inclination to say, oh God, the internal medicine people are going to tell me where I f*** up again. <laughs> and oh, there's number one. <laughs> Welcome back to the Curbsiders. Well, hello. Hello, Stuart. This Hi. is the internal medicine podcast that uses expert interviews to bring you clinical pearls and practice changing knowledge. Mm. I'm Dr. Matthew Watto here with multiple co hosts. Dr. Stuart. pretty good at saying this now. Dr. Stuart Kent Brigham. Well, hello again. Dr. Paul Williams. Hey, guys. And Dr. Sh- Shreya Paresh Trivedi. Hello. I thought you spelled Paresh with a U for some reason, but I'm not surprised that I was guessing wrong. P-A-R-E-S-H, just in case the audience wants to write it down for themselves. Shreya, good to have you back. (laughs) Yes, I'm so happy being back. Yeah, I don't know why I'm riffing on your middle name here. Don't know. That's not very nice of you. Let's just jump right into uh, Picks of the Week. Paul, do you have something for us? I think for this pick of the week, I'm going to harken back to a cartoon that debuted in 2003. I just, I don't know how well known it is, but it's the show, The Venture Brothers. Have you guys ever seen it? Yes. Yes. I've no, watched that one. No, I haven't. It, I, 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 what? Magnificent. No way. So, so I've it watched is, something that Paul's watched and not you. Uh, so now I'm, now I'm questioning its goodness. Mm. <laughs> in any case. It's kind of like C-Lab 2021. It's the same kind of goodness. It's, it's co-written by these guys, Jackson Public and Doc Hammer. It's actually a cartoon in the style of kind of Johnny Quest. It's a little bit of a rip yeah. off that. But it is completely absurd. It is a genius meditation on failure. Um, it has amazing voice acting by Patrick Warburton, particularly, and it has a score that has better than any rate it has to be by this guy named J.G. Thurwell. So it's just, it's a complete, thoughtful sort of universe of its own that also happens to be really, really funny um, and subversive. So if, if you're into cartoons that are not for kids, I would highly recommend The Venture Brothers. Yes, wonderful. Next, I want to go to Shreya. And Shreya, I think you have, uh, different than a pick of the week, In since we're talking about emergency medicine versus internal medicine tonight, why don't you tell people why you chose internal medicine rather than emergency medicine or, or some other specialty? Yeah. So third year of med school, I had a really hard time figuring out every kind of field I rotated and I had a little bit of a spark everywhere. And ER definitely had this exciting spark of uh, um, like resuscitation, immediate management. I thought I wanted to be a vascular surgeon for a little bit. I thought tying knots was like the coolest thing and I was really good at it. So I was like, oh, I should I should just like tie knots and be in the zone in the OR all the time. Um, but I really had to search uh, within myself to figure out which one of those sparks is going to be sustainable. Um, and that took me a hard, a long time to do. And, and for me, it, I had to realize that the most durable joy for me was, um, being in a position to, to give patients compassion and in like a long-term way as a primary care physician. And then also I loved, I, I kind of, some of, something I pride myself on is a really strong history. Like in, I feel like in IM you can take a really great history to really find out gaps in someone's care, prevent admissions. Um, I, I love that. And I love being someone's primary care doctor. I love when someone's like, yeah, Dr. Trivedi, that's my doc. Um, that joy for me was long lasting and kind of trumped all the other little sparks in the other fields. I personally, for me, I, I chose internal medicine the way that I've chosen jobs and residencies and things like that. Flip Basically, a coin. I just go, yeah, I flip a coin. No, I just go by feel. I'm like, these are my people. I feel comfortable around these people. I, I kind of, I have a similar mindset to these people mm-hmm. and that's, that's really how I choose. So it was all, uh, all just by feel, all just intuition, system one thinking, which we'll, we'll talk about later. Yeah. Wonderful. I have too much system too. I get all <laughs> deep in there and it gets well, crazy sometimes. That's what you use for internal medicine. But when you're making a decision about how to spend the rest of your it life, it sounds like you use system, system two. <laughs> 
No, but I think it's actually really relevant for the episode. Like, even when I'm sort of counseling students, I, you know, I think personality types tend to sort themselves out of the specialties. And so you hang out with the people that you like hanging out with. And right. that should actually play a pretty important role because you're trapped with these people for the so, rest of your life. So, Paul, why do you hang out with us? It's a great question. Um, I think mostly as an act of self-flagellation. <laughs> <laughs> At least it wasn't self-flagellance. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we can fix that in post. <laughs> Stuart? So, uh, yes. Um, my pick of the week is – so I, I wanted to briefly um, just mention that the – the program that I, that I use to write music, I don't know if, if anyone's interested in it, they can go take a look at this. It's actually available on the App Store. It's called Music Studio. Um, it's by Alexander Gross. It, it, the, uh, it, it sells for fourteen ninety nine on, on the App Store. If you want all the uh, samples that come along with it, it's another six ninety nine. dollars um, it, It's actually a pretty well put together uh, on-the-fly music studio that you can use. I, I used a lot of, of different programs in the past on um, and, and found that this is, this is a pretty helpful tool you can also make your own samples make your own loops as well it's it's actually pretty powerful it's a lot better at, at least on the ipad and on the fly uh, than uh, garage band and now to get to the episode i think that everyone's probably heard of dr scott weingart he i is... haven't <laughs> scott weingart is a clinical associate professor and chief of the division of emergency critical care Director, Resuscitation and Acute Critical Care at Stony Brook Hospital in Stony Brook, New York. And his uh, I'm going to go with his bio for New Wave Foamy Type Conferences, and that is verbatim from his website. Scott is an ED intensivist from New York. He did fellowships in trauma, surgical critical care, and ECMO. He is best known for talking to himself about resuscitation and critical care on a podcast called MCRIT, which has been downloaded greater than 19 million times. And if you haven't heard it, you really should check it out. They are short podcasts, super intense, dense with information about how to save the sickest patients. It's very well done. And we have I, some... I, heard he's a, I heard he's a fellow of the Utopian College of Emergency Medicine. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, please check out, I'll put it in the show notes, uh, the letters behind his name, he's M-D-F-C-C-M-F-U-C-E-M-D-I-P-H-T-F-U, and you can Google search what all that means. It's quite entertaining. Thank you for reminding me, Stuart. You're welcome. And without further ado, here is our discussion with Dr. Scott Weingart. Well, I think we should just ease into the talk here. With us, we have from MCRIT, Dr. Scott Weingart. Hey, hey folks. Scott, thanks so much for joining us on the show. And uh, we, we go first names with all our guests, and I think most people know you as Scott anyway, so I imagine you won't mind us calling you that for the show. Oh, I'd be offended if you called me Dr. <laughs> Weinhardt. That would, be, that would be just be ridiculous. Yeah. Well, now that I know what some of the letters mean in your title, uh, you know, I feel, <laughs> I feel informal is the way to go with you. In case some of our audience doesn't know who you are, could you give us a one-liner to describe yourself? Oh, gosh. Um, resuscitationist, autodidact, uh, dad, uh, who spends his spare time talking to himself. <laughs> <laughs> and spoken in, uh, in more of a... I can't even think. Okay, Stuart, that's, that's a good way to start the episode. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, was, it was spoken to the point without any poetic prose, just like an ER doctor. <laughs> <laughs> wow, there's so much loaded in that tiny yeah. little comment. That's a lot to unpack. <laughs> very, very fitting for the episode we're trying to pull off yes. here. Well, how about someone else ask Scott a question before we get on to the IM versus EM stuff? Well, I think even on your website, you have uh, like an entire section devoted to books, if I'm not mistaken. So rather than a favorite book, just just a recent one that's been impactful for you that you think people would benefit from. Oh, gosh. Uh, can I give you two? Sure. Okay. So I would definitely recommend uh, A Guide to the Good Life by Will Irvine. It uh, has really shaped a bunch of my talks that I've been given over the past year. It is basically an approachable vision of Stoic philosophy, and I, I think it can really change people's lives. And then uh, this hasn't been recent, but I think it's the one I will recommend to everyone uh, is Getting Things Done by David Allen, a book that could just change your entire uh, approach to productivity and actually you know, accomplishing the things you want to accomplish. In that vein, um, I was looking at all the tweets this weekend from Fix 17, which just sounds like an amazing conference. And um, a bunch of your slides kind of were similar things that get into uh, 
the book, get it, uh, getting things done. So the next question I wanted to ask, like, how can listeners better protect or manage their time? Kind of some particular tidbits that you want listeners to take away. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and th this is something I've been thinking about a lot. There was another book called deep work by a guy named Cal Newport that really set a lot of us off on this, uh, this path of thinking about how to protect our time. Uh, you have to have some goals in your career and then just be incredibly assiduous about guarding those, the time for those goals uh, at, at all costs. Uh, otherwise, it's so easy in medicine to just get trapped into these committees and this, mm -hmm. uh, this work on stuff you don't really care about and doesn't really advance the things you want to accomplish in the world. So just setting those goals, like just sitting down and actually writing down, like 10 years from now, here's the, some of the things I'd want to accomplish. That alone will markedly change how you approach your time and attention. And, and making commitments to those, you know, mm -hmm. instead of just having vague ideas and dreams. Absolutely right. Um, what's something about you that you can tell us uh, on our show <laughs> that we won't ever forget? <laughs> oh, man. I was supposed to be a professional chef. Uh, my, my folks didn't know this. I was planning on throwing away my entire college education and doing that. But uh, they came around recruiting for medical school, and I realized I could cook and be a doctor, but not vice versa. So I kind of <laughs> abandoned that. But I, I'd just be slaving the way in the back of a professional kitchen right now, working like 18-hour days and smelling like old soup. So uh, I, I, I guess I lucked out. Hmm. You still cook? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Scott, I wanted we we talked a little bit about how you're protecting your time. I just wanted to know with you you've been doing the podcasting thing for a long time. You're speaking at conferences. You have a website that's very well done. How much of this has been intentional? Has been a plan from the start? And and is is it deliberate? It seems like you're really good at planning this and and moving things forward. Can you can you give us some some advice on that? Uh, no, I, in fact, everything <laughs> has been just the opposite. Um, it, it was happenstance that this all started. I just love non-medical podcasts like Radio Lab and This American <laughs> Life. Uh, it, it got me into it. I just happened to have spent uh, my part-time job all through college as a audio and video engineer, and uh, those two came together. And I'm like, I, I could think I could do this, and. Uh, it, it got an audience. And after that, it was all self-perpetuating and everything just naturally uh, just fired off from there with really no planning at all. I'm, I'm really crappy at planning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure me and the audience, uh, lots of people listening feel a lot better hearing you, hearing you say that. Hey there, Chris Chu again. This is where you get a cut off from this bolus episode. If you want more drips of knowledge food into your brain hole, download or stream the full podcast. There will be further discussions on heuristics, how to avoid anchoring bias, the devil of the gaps, why the elderly always get admitted, how to build relationships with the ED and Scott's pet peeves. You can find the podcast on iTunes or Spotify and the show notes along with any links to articles, books, websites, or apps mentioned in the show at thecurbsiders.com forward slash podcast. If you follow us on Facebook as well as Twitter at The Curbsiders, Matt is at Dr. Watto. Stuart is at Brigham SK. Shreya Trivedi is at Shreya Trivedi MD. And I'm at CJ Chu. Music was provided by Stuart Brigham. Paintings were provided by curbsider correspondent Kate Grant. And more of her work can be found on her website, paintscientific.com and Twitter at KatePaint42. If you are artistic and want to have your work featured on a curbsider bolus, you can email us at thecurbsiders at gmail.com or comment below. Have a good day. No, we're in the outro here. This is kind of the, oh, the post-episode. <laughs> oh, I didn't the, realize we're still This is the post-episode okay. recap here, Stuart. So if you had anything, I, I did think he had some actually, I thought that was relatively constructive. Like, yes, uh, I, I think the big things that I had to take away, you know, don't let your ego get in the way of collaborating with a colleague. Yeah. Just kind of try to have a conversation with them to get inside their thought process if you need to. Right. Uh, maybe talking to the ER before you go down to see a patient is going to bias you, as, as Scott was saying. So maybe you only yeah. talk to them after you see the patient if you need to get some additional history from them. I thought that was all brilliant stuff. I think it was too. Well, I, I think in terms of engendering goodwill too, like one of the things that I do is anytime I get an admission every time one of my patients is even in the emergency department. So if I have time, I'll walk over to the ED and see that patient and talk to the ER attending. I, I feel like since I've been where I've been for such a long time and I do that and make a point 
to have relationships with those doctors. I feel like the relationship's completely non-antagonistic and often I'll get phone calls about patients in the ER like, hey, we're doing this or is this okay? Or can you see this person tomorrow? And it really, it, it greases the wheels, and makes things so much better than coming from an adversarial standpoint. I like the adversarial standpoint though. So. I'm not surprised. Her. <laughs> <laughs> I do not, not at all. I think I, I love to collaborate. It's a much better feeling. All right, well, with that, this has been another episode of The Curbsiders, Mm -hmm. bringing you a little knowledge food for your brain hole. You can find show notes along with links to any articles, books, websites, or apps mentioned on the show at thecurbsiders.com forward slash podcast. And please sign up to receive our excellent show notes. You can get those at thecurbsiders.com forward slash knowledge food. And send us an email. We want your feedback to the curbsiders at gmail.com and follow us on our pages on Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter at the curbsiders. Until next time, I've been Dr. Matthew Frank Watto. I'm Dr. Stuart Kent Brigham and Dr. Shreya Paresh Trivedi. We'll have to try that better. <laughs> <laughs> better than that, hard to imagine. And I remain Dr. Paul Williams. Good night. Oh, hey, Paul. <laughs>